Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today. We are enjoying a very practical series of studies, ministering to the least of these, people in need, mm -hmm. and our topic today, Living the Advent Hope. What does it mean to live the gospel in these last days of Earth's history? I'm excited about the topic, and I'm excited because one of our team, Stephanie, is going to be teaching today. Great topic. Amen. We've got a great team here to share, and you're with us too. And we'd always love to hear interactions from you. I'm excited when people write and say, here's my response to the question that Stephanie asked. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. We're glad you're part of our International Hope Sabbath School family. And we want to thank you for writing to us. Here's just a few notes. Thompson writes from Zambia and says, I watch Hope TV and I enjoy Hope Sabbath School. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May the God, the Holy Spirit, continue to be with us until the day Jesus comes. Amen. 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 You know, we've got lots of Hope Sabbath School members uh, there in Zambia. And I want to thank you for being part of our team. You know, I had to write to this lady. Her name is Het, H-E-T, Het Jane. She's from uh, Brazil. And I had to write and say, is that how your name is spelled and how do I say it? And it's Het. And Het writes and says, we have an English Sabbath school class here at Sao Paulo Adventist University. Mm -hmm. Since I have decided to help the class as one of the teachers, I started to search the internet for some material and comments about Bible study, and I found Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Well, we're glad, Het, that you did find Hope Sabbath School. She says it's been quite helpful to me. And every week I look forward to watch new episodes, not only for the task of leading the class, but for my own encouragement and spiritual enrichment. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Well, Head, we're just glad that you're leading an in-depth interactive class there at a university in Sao Paulo, Brazil. God bless you and uh, those who study with you. Here's a handwritten note from a donor Ooh. in California. Dear Pastor, thank you for Hope Sabbath School. It's been a blessing to me. I found Hope Channel on DirecTV, Channel 368. When I was hopeless mm. and looking for someone to study the Bible with me. Mm. Wow. 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 Love you. You are my family. Aww. God bless you all. Yeah. And a donation of $25. Wow. Amen. We are glad, California donor. Yeah. Yeah, you're part of our family. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We've learned. We've all got one Father yeah. and Amen. one God who's the creator of all. Mm -hmm. And we just, we really believe in a study of the Word of God yeah. because Amen. it points us to our loving Creator God and Savior. Marek writes to us from Poland mm -hmm. and uh, says, I welcome you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've not heard about a school like Hope Sabbath School before. <laughs> I'm inquiring and the Lord has led me to know more about the Bible with you. Amen. Amen. Every quoted verse brings me closer to revealing the personality of Christ and God himself. Amen. Amen. Please pray for the successful completion of a house of prayer in my city. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for a blessing for the Bible classes that you're conducting, and you are welcome to Poland. It's a beautiful country. <laughs> God bless you, Marek. Well, Marek, we're just glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And if we're ever in Poland, I know there's probably 10,000 Mareks there, but we're glad that you uh, are part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Thanks for writing to us. One last note from Joe in Kenya. And Joe writes, we've got some Kenyans on our team. May the good Lord be with you. As I write, I'm filled with joy to share messages of love with you all. I feel the love of our King Jesus around all of us. You see, my spiritual journey has mainly been through the Internet. Wow. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of bad things on the Internet, mm. but we need to have the good word there too, right? Yes. 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 I am a living testimony 
of how Christ delivers. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. And as I sing along with every Bible study, I have joy in my heart. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise be to God, for as of now, even on my spiritual journey, I've become a deacon in my church. Wow. Amen. Last Christmas, I shared a Bible study with my father and taught him the facts about the Bible. At first, he saw me as his son who could not teach him anything. Mm. But through Christ, he was amazed. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> wow. You know, I just want to thank you for writing to us. These, these are beautiful testimonies, aren't they? Amen. Yes. Yes, they are. Amen. He, my dad still doesn't understand how it all came about to happen to me. But slowly through Jesus, I'm going to teach him the word of God. Amen. 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 Shalom. And God bless all of you. Mm -hmm. Joe. Amen. Amen. Well, Joe, uh, you are a miracle in progress. As are each one of us. We're all a miracle in progress. And as we prepare for the soon coming of Jesus, we want to study today what it means to live the Advent hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited. But before Stephanie prays and leads us in the study, we're going to sing our theme song. It's become one of my favorite scripture songs from 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 5 and 16. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. Let's sing together. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. What a beautiful promise, uh, even as we study today about living the Advent hope. Amen. All right, let's pray as we study. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your, your word and to read the hope that we have in you. Hmm. Teach us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So our study today is about the Advent hope. If you were going to define Advent hope, how would you define that? Hmm. Travis. I would define it as the second coming or the hope of the second coming of Jesus. The hope of the second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. What, how would you define hope? Jason. Well, if I can read a scripture, would that be okay to define that? Sure. Which scripture were you thinking? Oh, Romans, the eighth chapter and 24 verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Yes. Let's see. Romans chapter 8, verses 24. And this is going to define what hope is. Amen. Okay. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Mm -hmm. All right. So hope is something that we haven't seen yet, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if we've seen it, it's no longer hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Jason. The word that comes to mind is an expectation. And in this context, particularly of something you're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Something that you're looking forward to. So I have the, this question for you then. Who needs a hope? Who needs the Advent hope? Everyone, oh. All of us. Everyone oh. does. That's right. So when you're ministering to someone, could we say that everyone we could minister to by giving them the hope yes. of the Advent, yes. of the second coming? Yes, Travis. I think that you really can't have hope unless you have a promise. 
right. unless you have a promise. Okay, right. so unpack that. <laughs> so if, I, if someone's promised me something, I have hope in receiving that. <laughs> and the hope that we look for is, comes from promises that we're giving from the scriptures. That's right. You're absolutely right. Mm, good point. Nicole. So when Travis said that, I thought of it's an eager awaiting of something. Because mm -hmm. you, you're eagerly awaiting something, whether it's the gift, whether it's the advent, whatever it is, it's an eager awaiting when I think of the word hope. I like that. And so we're thinking about this advent hope and we're looking for something that has been promised to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason we would hope in the second coming is because it's a better life, Amen. right? There's, it's not just here and now. This is not our home. Amen. Right? Yeah. right? So why would we want a better life? And I'm just setting a foundation here. <laughs> why would we want a better life? Because this world's damaged. That's right. yeah. It's very simple. Yes. Right. This is not God's plan. Mm. And you know, it has, this is something that is not new. We know that people throughout the ages have looked at the world we live in, and they all have mm -hmm. a common theme. So I'd like us to look at three passages as we begin. The first one is Psalm 94, and we'll be looking at verses 3 through 7. Gladys, if you could take that one. And then, Marcus, if you would be ready to read Habakkuk 1, verse 2. Sure. And uh, Evelyn, Revelation 6, verse 10. We're just going to read through these verses, and as we're reading... I'd like you to think about what the common theme is throughout. Mm -hmm. Gladys. I'm reading from the New International Version, Psalms 94, verses 3 to 7. How long, Lord, will the wicked, how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words. All the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, Lord. They oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the foreigner. They murder the fatherless. Mm. They say, the Lord do not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Take notice, you senseless ones among the people, you fools, when you become wise. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Marcus. Okay, and Habakkuk uh, 1 verse 2. And I'll give everyone a moment to get there. I'll be reading from the King James Version. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Mm. Even cry out unto thee, O vi of violence, and thou wilt not save. Mm. 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 And Evelyn, Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Mm. Mm. What is the common theme that you're hearing? Treva? There is a crying out to the mm -hmm. Father for justice, mm. for something to be done because of some type of persecution. Desire for freedom from persecution. Gladys. I like that the three verses say, how long? Yes. So just going back to the definition that we were giving, you know, mm. it's like expecting something. Yeah. It has been promised. Do these passages give you the impression that this person is feeling somewhat hopeless? Yes. yes. Mm. What do yeah. we have? How long are we going to be in this, mm. in this state? Yeah. Where do people find hope? Where do they, let me put it this way, where do people search <laughs> right. to find hope? Right. or to find a, a future. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Marcus <laughs> and then Jason. I would say, I would say even in, in this country, especially like politics, people always hope that the next president or the next governor or the next whoever mm. will be there to deliver them some type of, of reward or restitution from their suffering. Mm. So look, they're looking for people to people, give yes. them hope. Jason. Yeah. I think People can look for relationships, whether it's a significant other or, you know, getting into a marriage or something like that. They can think that a relationship, a friendship, just having another person will give them that hope. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. I think people also look for hope in possessions. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could be money or things, you know. Looking for hope in people, in possessions. 
How about uh, positions? Mm -hmm. Possible, mm -hmm. all right. Jason. Yeah, sometimes people can look for themselves as, you know, for hope as far as what they can do. It becomes self-absorbed and what they can do and try to make different uh, moves or different uh, ways of them finding hope into the situation that they may be in. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'd like to go over to Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 26. And Addison, if you would be prepared to read that for us. And let's take a look at what the prophet has found his hope in, all right? And this is during some, some t troublesome times, right? Absolutely. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 26. And I'm reading from the King James Version. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, mm. because mm. His compassions fail not. Mm. They are new every morning. Amen. Mm. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, when I hear those verses, it just gives me mm. hope, <laughs> right? It gives me energy. Where did mm. the prophet find his hope or choose to find hope? Actually, the, the next verse mm -hmm. says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul, mm -hmm. therefore yes. I hope Open. in Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 So that's, that's where He chooses. And like you said, this is where Jerusalem has just been ransacked, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. temples in ruins, yeah. yes. and Jeremiah's lamenting. Mm -hmm. That's where Lamentations book comes from. Mm -hmm. He's lamenting, but he says, My hope is in God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And through all of that turmoil, that's where he placed his hope. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, it just gives me such encouragement when I hear, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. voice up your spirits. <laughs> now, Jesus also speaks about um, where to find our hope mm -hmm. or encourages us mm -hmm. on, through a parable in Luke chapter 18. And we'll go there, and Billy, if you would read that for us. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And as we're reading through that parable, I'd like us to think about what is Jesus saying to us about finding our hope in God, Billy? Okay, so I'll be reading from the King James Version. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint, saying... There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversaries, adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. <laughs> and the Lord says, is it to verse 5 or 6? Through 8. Through please. 8, okay. And the Lord said, hear what, unjust, uh, what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, mm -hmm. though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, what, when, the, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Mm. Mm. All right. From mm. this parable, what do we learn about finding our hope in God? Mm. Well, I, Trisha Lee. I think that there's a, um, the, Jesus is making an example mm -hmm. that even in an um, unjust or situation, this earthly judge or court, mm -hmm. if he was possibly unwilling to avenge her of her adversary, as she's asking for, the first time, eventually he did it just because he was tired of hearing for her. And so he's making the example, if this earthly court or judge could act this way, your heavenly father who's not tired when we call on him, not Amen. tired when we pray to him, could never get tired of us. Mm -hmm. Of course he will um, bring justice to our situation. And so Jesus is asking them, when he says, will, will the son of man find faith on the earth? Will you still believe that God will do justice for you, even though you don't see it right away? Mm -hmm. So that's really what he's saying, because sometimes we ask for things, we don't get it right away, or we're still in those situations. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying, do you have faith to continue hoping, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that the promise, as uh, Travis mentioned, is, is sure? Pray without ceasing, yes. right? Yes. 
Did every, anyone else have a comment? All right, Marcus. Just waiting really is the hardest part, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And, and when you've been through a situation where you might have lost somebody close to you mm. and it may have happened under tragic circumstances, you know, can you still trust and put your faith and hope in the Lord even though it just doesn't look like the situation w is going to get resolved or, it just, or there's so much grief in your heart, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the relationship that you have with Christ with, that you have with the Father will help sustain you, but it's not an easy wait. No. Mm. <laughs> it, it's never easy to wait, is it? Yeah. So let me ask you this. When did you choose to find your hope in God? Mm. And I want to go a step further. What has your life been like since that decision? How has that changed your course, Nicole? It's not one decision for me. I think that I have to every day and every time a new situation approaches, approaches me, I have to choose my hope in God. And so it makes it challenging because when things don't go my way, I have to wait on what he's going to do. Mm. But I think that for me, it's an ongoing decision daily to make that decision that I'm going to hope in God in his return. Amen. 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 I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Jason and then Gladys. So uh, I have a testimony to share. Um, I was in the military, in the Navy uh, specifically, and I joined without being able to swim. So <laughs> <laughs> go figure, right? So through my time in boot camp, I tried to swim, you know. I kept on getting sent back. I was not qualified maybe three or four times. Mm. But it came to a point that I had to pray to God. And I asked the Lord to help me because I wanted to graduate from boot camp. So it just so happened I was doing my part. I was, you know, doing my little uh, motions or what have you, praying to hope that muscle memory would kick in. <laughs> and when I went in the water for my test, I popped up and I just remember it kicked in and I could just thank the Lord all the way. And it was an Olympic sized swimming pool. So I swam from one end to another and I thank God the whole way. That's when the hope kicked in because <laughs> I knew it was a miracle. I knew I didn't do this on my own. So right then and there, I was thanking God. And that's when, wow. from that point of me swimming by God, uh, you know, God's grace, it just elevated my faith in him even the more. That if I could trust him in this, I know I could trust him in other things Amen. in my life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gladys. I think that sometimes, you know, um, when things are going easy, we read the words of God and his promises and, and, and we say amen. But it's not till the moment of trial comes mm -hmm. that that hope is really revealed, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I have shared with you guys before what happened with me last year, you know, a while ago with my surgery. And it is just like life comes to your face mm -hmm. and you just say, do I really trust God with my life. Mm. When it's a situation of life and death, that's when you really look at what you believe. And if you have that hope that God has you in his hands, things are just totally different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and it is not till that moment that you realize whom you have believed. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. And Nicole mentioned something about that hope in the second coming. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to look at that hope as we move on in our lesson. In Matthew chapter 24 and 24, 5, you know that it talks about the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. And there are, it's definitely the center of our hope, right? That's, it's a pivotal point mm -hmm. of where we place our hope. I'd like to take a look at what we should be doing be in the interim between now <laughs> right. and the second coming, right? Because right. I have a feeling we're not supposed to just be sitting down Ooh, and twiddling boy. our thumbs, right? <laughs> There's something for us to do. So let's look in Matthew 24, and we'll look at verses 45 to 51. And Travis, if you would read that for us. Okay. Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour that he is not aware of. And he will cut him into, 
and he will cut him into and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that passage say that we should be doing? <laughs> Ooh. Diligently working. Mm. Diligently working. What else do you see there? Mm. Providing for the needs. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. In the verse 45, when that wise, the faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler of the household, to give them meat in due season. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that means feeding yes. mm. those that they have responsibility over. Mm -hmm. right. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Trisha Lee. There's also um, conflict that's taking place here. It talks about their one servant is beating another servant or they they're beat their fellow servants and start to eat and drink with drunkards. And so it's this attitude that if you lose your sight of the hope mm -hmm. that the Lord is coming, the whole purpose, like what are we here for? You start mm -hmm. to get involved in disagreements or petty arguments. Like, why are they beating each other? And mm -hmm. then the eating and drinking, it's as if it's like, to your point, they're just sitting back. It's like, we have work to do. There is, we should be preparing for the Lord to come. Yes. Um, it's as if the party started already <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's the wrong type of party. <laughs> and so they, they, they've completely lost sight of what the focus is. And I think that's the danger. They start to fight amongst themselves mm -hmm. and they start having the party a bit too early and in the wrong type of party, in fact. And let's move over, thank you very much, Trisha Lee. Let's move to chapter 25 and look at verses 14 and 15. And Jason, if you would be willing to read that for us. This also gives us a choice. It shows us the options that we have. Let's go ahead and read verses 14 and 15 of Matthew 25. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 and 15. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Mm. Mm. All right, so what is the options that these individuals have? They've been given talents. What are the talents? What does that represent? Hmm. Gifts, skills. Gifts, Spiritual skills. Mm -hmm. In that culture, it was, a talent was 6,000 days wages. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's 20 years wages, even to the smallest portion. Mm -hmm. wow. So a massive amount of resource mm -hmm. was given according to the master's mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. to each of them. Uh, with no specific instructions, except maybe their relationship would determine how they would use those resources. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Travis. Well, the fact that they're called servants, <laughs> uh, servants means there's a responsibility with the resource. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that Derek used the word resource because resource can mean many things. Mm -hmm. right. Resource can be information, resource can be monetary, resource can be... Um, respon different responsibilities, but they're servants. So when you're a servant and the master gives you a resource, there's a responsibility that comes with that resource. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So they have options, mm -hmm. either to use that resource wisely or to choose not to use it wisely. How do we relate that to what we should be doing in our day between now and the second coming of Christ? Trevor. I think also in the scripture, we talked about this before, where people may feel like, well, what can I offer? What can I do? And this scripture shows us that God has given us something, mm -hmm. some type of resource, even if it's your testimony, which is one of the most powerful things you can mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. to bring people closer to Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if anything, that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Trisha Lee, I see you're ready to say something. It's just a great um, question that you're asking because we all have um, talents. And even just this week, my husband and I were commenting about a very um, popular uh, musician, someone in the music industry, and we're, who's in trouble. And we were thinking to ourselves, man, what if this individual had used these gifts for the glory of mm. God? Like, mm. how many lives could he have impacted with his lyrics and his music? He's so skilled and talented. Mm. And yet it's like just headlines after headline of negative things. And mm. so 
We have a choice to invest in the kingdom of God, which is spiritual, blessing others, mm. or we have an opportunity to invest in the things that are passing away. Mm. There's no doubt that this person is talented, but the things that he spent his time investing in I have not reaped anything beneficial to anyone Ooh. in the long in the long run. And so we can focus on our job, our education, or on things that might get us big wins in this life. But are we thinking about how we're using our skills to, to bless others, to bless and build the kingdom of God? Mm. The, op the option is there for us, but how do we use our skills to really build God's kingdom? Amen. I like that. And let's move on and look at some practical ways. Mm. And m staying in Matthew mm. chapter 25, and we'll be looking in verses 31 through 40. 31 through 40. And Puya, would you read that for us? We're looking at some practical ways of how we should be spending our time until Christ comes. Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, mm. and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Mm -hmm. mm. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of this, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. So tell me what, what have you learned from this passage as you've done your own study? Travis, I and then we'll go to Gladys. I remember reading in Matthew 7 about a similar group. But this group said, look at what we've done. <laughs> and he said, depart from me, I don't know you. Mm. And this group of people here, they're like, when did we do this for you? <laughs> and I remember Billy's story in a lesson or two ago. Uh, and I can imagine Jesus saying to him, you know, I had pizza with you that day. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never going to, he's going to be like, when did this happen? You know, They'll have to go back and listen to that lesson have, now, yeah. right? <laughs> but it's just like when we're doing things, you know, with compassion for somebody else, Jesus resonates with each and every, every person. And when you're doing something for them, it's like you're doing it for Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't even mm -hmm. realize it. It's not, it's that thought isn't even in your head. It's just like, I want to help this person. And Jesus right. says, you've done it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Travis, I appreciate the fact that you brought out that verse that says, I never knew you mm. when they, they showed him. So this is not about I'm working my way to heaven, is mm. it? No. Right. No. 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 It's talking about having that connection mm. that allows the love to flow out mm. through us. Yes, that Gladys. That is exactly what I was going to say, that when that connection is strong, you are just reflecting the character of God. Mm. The love of God is just flowing through you, so you don't even realize. It just becomes part of who you are. Right. So it is just second nature to you to help others. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Marcus. A little bit of context to add uh, to what Travis was saying is that basically when those people said, well, we did good things, we did good works as well, and the Father and Jesus said, depart, I never knew you, it's because their hearts weren't in the right place. So what mm. I'm trying to say is a great work, right, mm -hmm. that is done for some type of self-glorification mm. is not acceptable to God versus a mm. small work that is mm. done in self-sacrifice and mm. with no uh, self included in that work. So mm. a small work done for the master 
is better than a large and great work with just a little bit of self injected in there. Mm -hmm. So it's not the size of the work that we do. Amen. It is whether we have surrendered to the master and mm -hmm. want to give all glory and honor and That's praise right. to him. Amen. And mm -hmm. that is amazing. I definitely agree with that. I do want to say that if someone is watching and they say, but that person did bless me by their acts of kindness, mm -hmm. even though they had selfishness in there. Can God use that? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He can still use people, even though their hearts may not be in the right place. Mm -hmm. Anything else that stands out to you in this passage? Mm. Mm. Yes, Fuya. Um, not exactly from the verse here, but... Um, I, I remember an experience that I had a couple of years ago when I was serving as a student volunteer in Hawaii and um, there was a family that needed help with moving as they were moving from one part of the island to the other part and they had so many things to carry and you know they didn't have enough people to help them out so they invited me so I went there and a lot of people were busy so they couldn't stay behind so they asked me if I could stay a little longer and I did, and I went inside, and I helped paint the house and all of that, and I have forgotten all about it. Mm. And the end of the year came, and it was time for me to leave the island. And the family invited me over. And as I walked into the house, and said, Puya, do you remember this time? Like, do you remember this wall? This was what you painted. I was like, oh, wait a minute, yes, this is what I painted. You know, uh, it, it brought joy to them as well as me. The point is, sometimes it's not about trying to help you know people all the time i think it's about asking god to put us in places where mm -hmm. he Amen. wants to use us yes. you Amen. know and Amen. when we place ourselves in the place where god can use us he will bring us to the people who need our help yes. when the time is right amen. amen being connected now there's another hope that we want to take a look at which is closely connected with the second coming and this is an event that will take place at Jesus' return. Mm -hmm. It was a precious truth that was boldly proclaimed by the um, early Christians found in Acts chapter 4, verse 33. And Trisha Lee, if you would read that for us, let's find out what that truth and promise is. Certainly. Reading from the New King James Version. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. What did they give testimony or witness to? The resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah. The resurrection. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the resurrection. What had they just gone through? If you think about Acts chapter 1, what had they just seen? The ascension. Mm. The ascension. They had just seen their, their crucified, buried, mm -hmm. and risen Savior leave mm -hmm. in Acts chapter 1. And so they're able to proclaim with power, my Savior mm -hmm. died and he rose again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's my question for us. What, um, what is the importance? Why is it so important or pivotal to our our hope that Jesus rose again. Hmm. And I like us, Travis, can you take us to 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Sure. Hmm. And we'll take a look at the a few verses 12 through 19. And then Treva, if you would read verses 20 through 23. Okay. Let's see what the Bible says, how pivotal this truth of the resurrection is to Christians mm -hmm. living today. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 12 through 19. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he has raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. 
then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men the most pitiable. All right, so if Christ didn't rise, then what is the, the natural conclusion? Mm -hmm. We're still, in our sins. we're still in our sins. Mm -hmm. There's no resurrection. Why? There's no resurrection. There's no we're hope. miserable. There's no hope. Oh, what's the point? Faith is alive. That's right. Let's look at verses 20 through 23, Treva. And I'll be reading from the New King James translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead Amen. and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, mm. but each one in his own order. Mm. Christ the first fruits afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. Amen. Mm. So it's good news that Christ rose again, right? Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that death is not a problem? <laughs> no. No. no, death is an enemy. <laughs> That's what the Bible says, yeah. it's mm -hmm. an enemy and it will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But as Christians, Paul says that we don't, we're, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Right. Yeah. I'd like us to turn over, and Nicole, if you would read this for us, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 yeah. through 18, yeah. and see what, what it is that we why we can have this hope. Nicole. First Thessalonians, 13, First Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18 from the New International Version says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Hmm. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven okay. with a loud command, mm -hmm. with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Mm. Amen. 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 Have you ever been encouraged by the, the truth of the resurrection? Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, yeah. You know, I never got to see my grandfather. Mm. He passed away before I was born. Uh, my grandfather from my father's side. And last year when I had the opportunity to go back home to my country, Myanmar, um, I asked my grandmother if, I could, if we could visit my uh, grandfather's uh, grave here, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tombstone, because to be honest, I never really remember uh, that I've ever visited, you know, that place, cemetery. So we went over there and we realized that there was no, no more, you know, the, uh, no more markings. It was just a stone and the, the markings were almost gone. So I told my grandma, grandma, like, we have to do something about this. We need to you know, create a new, um, at least a good looking tombstone, <laughs> at least so that people in the future, you know, maybe, you know, who knows, in the future, our families would like to come back and know that this is where our grandfather laid rest. Now, the thing about my grandfather was he was once an alcoholic. I knew, I knew at least that much about him. So in my mind growing up, I used to wonder the question, you know, will I ever get to see my grandfather again? Mm -hmm. Because if he was an alcoholic and if he did not really accept a Jesus, then I, I didn't know if there could be any hope. That was the question that I had growing up because nobody ever told me much about his life. And all I knew that was he was never really someone who liked to go to church or read the Bible. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother said, sure. So we call our family. We, get, we had a get together. We had a meal and we talked about repairing, you know, the place where my grandfather laid to rest. And in that process, one of my uncles stood up and shared a story about my grandpa. And one of the things that he said was that just before my grandfather passed away, mm. he said, my grandfather was going through that moment of repentance. Mm. Mm. He said, my grandfather was crying, he said, mm. on his deathbed 
with, you know, saying like, oh, am I to meet Jesus without bringing anyone along with me? Mm. You know, bring, without bringing anyone to Him, mm. am I to meet my Lord? You know, with, with that, with those dying words, my grandpa, my, my grandpa passed away. So when he said that, I realized, wait a minute. My grandfather repented of his sin just before he passed away and accepted mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. And that gave me so much hope, mm -hmm. knowing that one day when Jesus comes again, I will get to see my grandfather again. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I think all of us, I don't know about you, but in our minds, we're thinking about that person that we're going to mm -hmm. meet. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Um, I know that I am. <laughs> and, um, you know, as I think about that, we have such a hope in that resurrection morning. Mm -hmm. But some people are fearful of death. Mm -hmm. And they're fearful of death because of the judgment. Mm -hmm. They know. The Bible speaks that in, at the time of judgment, uh, we will s stand before the judge. Mm -hmm. And the question is, who is going to be with us? And mm -hmm. what hope do we have mm -hmm. in this judgment. Ooh. So I'd like us to take a look at John chapter 5 and verse 22 through 24 and see what the, the Bible says about the hope that we can have even in the judgment. John chapter 5 verse 22 through 24 and Addison, would you read that for us? Yeah, for sure. And I'm reading from the King James Version. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, hmm. but is passed from death unto life. Amen. 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 So where do you find hope in that passage? <laughs> Trisha so, Lee. I think about our, the criminal justice system in the U.S. Mm. There is a court, there is a judge, there is a jury, there mm. is a, typically lawyers, prosecution, defense. Um, and there could be witnesses here or there. If we read through the whole great controversy themes of the Bible, we're told that the, our great um, adversary, the devil, is always trying to accuse us. Mm -hmm. But here, um, it's as if the system's rigged in our favor, mm -hmm. that the person who is advocating for us is Jesus. The person who's our greatest uh, sacrifice is Jesus. The one who's witnessing on our behalf is still Jesus and the, and the Holy Spirit who know the conversion process we've been through. Mm -hmm. And now we find out that the judge, the judgment is also mm -hmm. being given to Jesus. <laughs> it's not as if that we should take it lightly. We can live our lives any way we want. But mm. we're seeing here that God is literally doing everything he can so that the ruling is in our favor. Mm. If we accept yeah. his mercy, his sacrifice, what he's doing for us, yes. it's like how can we lose when judgment is in favor of the saints? It's in favor of his Amen. people. Amen. 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 That, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I'd like for you to, to think of maybe a Bible verse. There's someone who may be watching today. You may be watching mm. us and for the first time, and you're wondering, how can I have hope in the time of judgment? So what would you say to someone who is wondering, what, how do I find hope even in the judgment? Travis? I think of Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Romans chapter 5, verse mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read that for sure. us? Sure, sure. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. And we're looking at hope in the time of judgment. All right, and I'll be chapter reading, 5. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 So what, uh, unpack that a little bit. What would you say to that person? So somebody who is fearful of the judgment has thought, I had so many sins in my life. I have so many things that in my life. But Jesus says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful to, for, for, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First and, John 1, 9? Yeah, and, okay. and, and they <laughs> might think, well, I just don't, uh, how could he ever do this? And we can go to Romans 5, 20 and say, where sin, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Amen. Amen. He has more grace than you have sinned. Praise okay. God. Mm. 
Was there another verse? Yes, Jason. I got an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> <laughs> what, what verse would you like to read? It's Psalms, the 86th chapter, mm. and that uh, verse 5. Psalm 86 mm -hmm. and verse, verse, five. verse 5. And we're looking at promises for hope in the time of judgment. Amen. Right. Now I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay. And the Bible says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Amen. Amen. So it's, it just shows that God, he's ready, you know, mm. to forgive, you know. Amen. He's sitting there waiting for us to come unto him, you know, to be forgiven of our sins, our trespasses, so that he can just embrace us like that picture mm. in the prodigal son. You know, the Amen. father, you know, just waiting, looking, you know, for his son to come to him so that he can embrace him, you know. So that's what <laughs> yeah. I get from that. Amen. Derek. And that scripture song that Jason just read was written by someone who had committed adultery yes. and murdered mm. someone, yes. and yes. lied, mm. and damaged his family, mm. but had the courage to say, created me a clean heart. heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 So he confessed his sin, renewed yes. the right spirit within me. And now he can write that testimony because he's experienced it. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think hope comes, even though we don't see, like you said, mm. we have seen what God is doing now. Amen. 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 And that gives us confidence in his promise. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that reminds me of the verse in 1 John 4. We won't read it, but there's no fear in love. Yes. And when you have this, when you know that God loves you Amen. and that Jesus loves mm. you, that fear at the time of judgment mm. because gone. he stand beside, him, right. yeah. beside you, yes. it is, it's mm. gone. Yeah. Amen. We wanna move on to our last um, hope that we're going to look at, which is hope realized in the new heavens and the new earth. And I'd like us to take a look. Uh, we know that from Second Peter, that this new heavens and the new earth, this is where righteousness dwells. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When, that, when you hear that, what do you think of? Mm. What My comes favorite, to your Hebrew mind? Word, hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, because it doesn't dwell here. I mean, it doesn't. We, we seek to let righteousness be revealed, but there's so much darkness in this present world. Right, and we can't even imagine. I, I think <laughs> that we're so... Uh, blinded to He's the reality of what yeah. sin has yeah. done yeah. Right. Exactly. to our world that we don't, we can't even imagine what that would look like, mm. except Revelation mm. chapter 21 and 22. And, you know, I think we're just going to go ahead and read verses one through five in Revelation chapter 21. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. Evelyn, if you would read that for us, and then we'll read verses one through five in chapter 22 of the same book in Revelation. And um, Jason, would you pr be prepared to read that? So Revelation 21, verses one through five. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Hmm. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There mm. shall be no more death, mm. nor sorrow, nor crying, nor shall there be, n there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Mm. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Mm. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Mm. True Amen. and faithful words. Wow. Oh, Jason, Amen. would you read for us Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. 
and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. There shall be no night there. Mm -hmm. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And by the way, in the next verse it says that these words are faithful and true. Mm -hmm. So some people think that this is a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the word of God? Yes. 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 Can you imagine what that will be like? Mm. Yes. Mm. Amen. <laughs> wow. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and the reason we can believe Stephanie is because he's been so faithful with the other yes. promises he's given yes. us. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. He's given us freedom from the guilt of sin. Mm. He's given us a new heart. Mm. We've Amen. seen the miracles, healings that he's done in our friends' lives. Mm. This is not just something we're imagining. It's based on our relationship with him. Yes. Mm. That we trust his promise. Amen. Amen. As you think about it, and we've looked at the hope that we have in God. Mm. Why? Because we know that we're in a broken world. We have hope in God. We have hope in the second coming of Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have hope in the resurrection because of Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have hope at the time of judgment because Jesus, Jesus. will stand beside us. Yes. And we have hope in eternity with Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't this something that we want to share with others? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are people that need to hear about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. The hope Amen. that we have in Jesus, this Advent hope. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it make us want to just get up and do something? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I hope that that's what we'll walk away with today. Yes. Yeah. As we think about that, that our hope really is in Jesus and we need to share Amen. that with others. Amen. 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 And I'm so glad it's called Hope Sabbath School <laughs> <laughs> because we've been talking about hope today and really that's just God's leading because without hope, people die. Yes. But we have hope in Jesus. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, team. Thank you to you for joining us for our study today. And uh, yes, how can we keep that hope to ourselves? We need to share that hope, that Advent hope with those around us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so blessed as we come and believe your words. You've been so faithful to all of the other promises that have been already fulfilled in our lives. Thank you that your words are faithful and true. Mm -hmm. And thank you that we can live the Advent hope and share that hope with others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 How can you keep that hope to yourself when there are people who feel hopeless all around us? Take that Advent hope and make a difference in the lives of those around you.